What is up, everyone? Hello, hello. So, welcome back to a live daily forex analysis for today on Tuesday. So, how are you guys doing? So, a few people again tuning in. How are you guys doing? We have. Okay, so I think I'm on, right? Yeah, I'm on. Here on live. Sometimes it shows up, sometimes it doesn't. Okay. Right. Okay, so we are back to the live forex analysis as we usually do Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. UK time. We go on a live at 8 a.m. in UK time or whichever time you are on. It depends where you are at the moment. Okay, so we do a uh, live live daily forex analysis, which means that I do analyze uh, currency pairs. So I pre-select the three currency pairs, which I normally do, and then after that I do come back and analyze your requests as well as your if you've got any questions, and the way you can let me know is the chat box on your right hand side. So me and Emily, my lovely assistant, we're gonna be in here, um, sort of uh, in front of the camera. She's more of a behind the scenes. So, so she's helping me out to do all that behind the scenes. So if it's a too many messages, I do sometimes miss them and all that. So she's here to make sure that, that I do get all your uh, messages across. I do normally do this uh, live for example this for one and a half hours unless we are pretty quiet in the chat box so then I will call it a day earlier than that uh, but if you're too busy then we I do this one and a half hours so I'll be staying here for the entire one and a half hours uh, unless as I said we are pretty quiet. So I do press like the three currency if there's no request by uh, the end of I finish the analysis of these three currency pairs, then I will analyze a couple more and give it uh, the, give it some time. And if, if the low one is show, uh, shows up, uh, then I will um, call it a day. Uh, today Tuesday can be more uh, busier than usual. But the funny thing is, since I started the Discord channel, <laughs> it's gone pretty quiet on the live stream. Sneaky. Okay, so it's funny. <laughs> yeah, since uh, I think I said about a month ago, the the Discord channel, so there's a lot of um, more people joined from the ones who were on the live stream, but then uh, now they just keep it on the live uh, on the on the Discord channel, then on the on the live stream. But there are few people that still do show up, but uh, they mainly since I noticed the, the drop of the uh, drop of the viewers on the uh, the live stream since yeah, since pretty much I started the. Uh, uh, the Discord channel. So the Discord channel is here. There's only quite a few people join up and all. Okay, so that's good. Okay, I'm gonna start with a USD CAD followed by British pounds USD and then USD Japanese yen. And if you got any questions or any of the currency you want me to have a look at it, then uh, yeah, just let me know in the chat on your right hand side. Okay, let's jump into the start analyzing from the USD CAD. Uh, oh yeah, the one thing I don't want to mention, yeah, if I see any levels or anything, uh, I'm going to take the trades, then I will mention any levels I'm looking at in terms of the entry stop losses as well as the targets, so all of that I'm going to mention it, and if I'm not going to be on a live stream when that happening, then I will mention it in the, in the Discord channel. Uh, the markets are pretty choppy, uh, it doesn't really give us too many opportunities in terms of the trading, I've noticed that for two over two weeks now two weeks ago it was it started and then now it still continues the, the setup wise is it's not that good in terms of uh, when it goes to my strategy wise uh, but um I did mention them back testing on the different uh, different place different um, strategies so I want to see I might have more um, coming in uh, to trade the different of a uh, different uh, conditions on the markets so we're gonna see how it's gonna go it's gonna still take me a quite a bit a few time to to complete that backtest thing because um, yeah I do backtest pretty uh, it takes me time because I backtest it pretty well and uh, I want to make sure that uh, you need to be aware of the, the biases and all that because you already know the outcome of the uh, what the market did so you have to be aware very aware of the biases and different market positions and all that. Okay, let's jump into start analyzing with a USD cash. So, starting with the daily time frame, we see that we do have this trend line, same as yesterday. I was, I did analyze yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, the price tested the trend line, then it had the reaction came down, and now it's coming back up again. On um, so it's it looks like it's gonna probably handrail, maybe. We're gonna see if it's gonna manage to break it today, but that's we're not gonna know it until um, 
prove out if tomorrow or this today's session is uh, close. Uh, but let's have a look at the short time frames and we might have some opportunities to get in. Uh, so far, nothing because I've been looking at this one earlier for a few hours back. Uh, so far, nothing going on because we are still in this range bounds. It's the price is not really doing much and looks like it's hugging its uh, hugging its trend line. It doesn't want to let it go. Uh, let's go to one hour time frame. Uh, pretty similar picture. Yeah, so until the price breaks the uh, level, this until we have broken this uh, level, there's not really much we can do unless you want to trade the uh, choppy market. Personally, I don't like uh, trading in choppy markets. I always look for some kind of some kind of move because uh, obviously that's what. That's where we can get the most pips out of it. And if I see too choppy, then it's no point of uh, just trading a few pips. I just don't see, uh, personally, I don't see the, the amount of time I have to put in and the uh, what I get back is just not worth it. So uh, time is more valuable, valuable than money, in my opinion. Because money can get it back, time you can't. Once it's done, it's gone. Okay, in terms of the USD CAD, uh, nothing going on so far in terms of the trading it. Uh, I hope maybe we'll do something for today. So we got already UK session is open, uh, starting to edge higher, maybe on a New York session, I don't know. Uh, but so far it's on this uh, range bound, so until the price starts breaking this uh, higher, ideally I would look for the, uh, the downside, ideally. But... Um, doesn't have to be obviously ideally I want to see the price coming down potentially breaking this breaking this level and we have another level down at this level here but between this uh, how was it? 50 to 25 roughly about okay 25 pips because from this level to this level with the retracement we can just get about 25 to 30 pips out of this so that's a decent decent enough we're going to have a tight stop, that's something like 10 15 pips. All right, so the risk reward wise, it will be good, but for now, we have to wait because uh, it's, it's not really much to go down, it's pretty flat. So, that's the USD CAD size. Uh, so it's not really going out much. Uh, let's go to the GBP USD. Oh, Chuko Maka, hello, hello. Uh, we have uh, good morning. Uh, he said, Can we get entry suggestion for the US 30 and SP 500 NASDAQ 2? Okay. Uh, I can have a look at them. I don't arbitrate S&P 500, the US 13 NASDAQ. Uh, I think I traded one or two times, but I generally don't trade. But we can have a look at uh, them too. Okay, US 30. It's going to be... It's going to be... Let's go to US uh, 30. Let's see what we have on a daily. Okay, I'm going to come back to the currencies, uh, so not to worry, uh, I will be analyzing uh, just after I've done this. Uh, okay, on a daily time frame, it does not look particularly... Let's have a look at the weekly stand on a weekly time frame in here. Okay, weekly is pretty steep up, then we have a steep down again. It's got a four hourly time frame. Okay, on a four hourly time frame, looking pretty good. I don't like the four hourly look on it. Uh, however, on day time frames, I don't like it. Okay, let's go. Let's see, we have this. Hold on. This one doesn't draw the channel, does it? Okay. Yeah, this one is. I don't know. I don't know. I don't normally. I don't trade off this one, but I, I can't find how to draw the channel on this. It should be on this uh, this area. I may have been here. Fibonacci which was not true. There's gotta be something. Okay, let's just draw the uh, two trend lines up here because we have this uh, channel on a four-hour time frame. Looks like a nice as well. Mm. 
bigger. We have this nice okay, no, that's not correct. But we have this nice channel going on over the lower and the upper trend line at least, uh, which creates a channel. On the four hourly looking good, so the price came up, tested these highs. Now it's coming down. Yeah, just by looking on the daily time frame, it's very jammed. Like this area in here, where I just draw this uh, trend lines in here, this channel is very jammed. So, so it makes it a bit difficult to um, to identify targets and to actually as well where the price might be heading. So we have this nice down bar, and then uh, two days ago we had this nice down bar and then yesterday we had this really uh, sharp up bar so we covered uh, every, pretty much everything we was lost even though the sort of uh, the trend is starting to go down it's not very uh, clear until obviously the price goes further down uh, so this one is a bit puzzling because yesterday was nice up bar generally when i see the nice up bar and i would trade towards upside but Day before we had a nice bar, um, nice down bar, and then now uh, we are. It's uh, the way it looks is very jammed, so I don't particularly like that look. Um, in this case, uh, how would I trade this? So twenty-five seventy is the resistance. We have got this up here. Let me have a look at the one hour time frame, see what we have on the one hour time frame. <laughs> yeah, it's very contradicting. Very contradicting. Because based on the four hourly, it's looking. Looking is going down, but we still have this nice moves. Uh, nice moves. Whether the price is going to uh, decide to come up, take out these highs, and potentially test the trend line, uh, could be. And this one, this uh, the price is coming down. Looks like a pullback, so it's a bit of a tricky one. Try this. Yeah, and on the one hour time frame, we did this uh, double uh, double top move on the one hour time frame. It came down, and then this spike in here is a small pullback. So it came up, uh, yeah, just down to this low. So it's most likely where the order is getting to the short side as well. So it's it's very contradicting with the four hourly, one hourly, and the daily time frame. It's just very jammed. So I don't like when I see this uh, contradiction uh, between the um, the time frames. So that's why I'm like, okay, which is the uh, which is the right uh, sort of side to pick? Because on a four hour, I would pick on the long side, but on a one hour, I would pick on the short side. And on the yeah, on the daily time frame, okay, daily just looking too weird now. So I would rely on a four hour time frame because the four hour is more um, it's a higher time frame. So I would. Uh, Yeah, I would look for the higher time frames better because they're more reliable than the shorter time frame, even though it's a one hour time frame. Okay, how far is this trend line? Let's go to this one 2582. That would be a decent. Twenty-five, eighty-two. Okay. 
to. But the best way I can see to trade this one is I'll trade on this one to the long side for now uh, to at least up to this level, which is at 25, around 25.82, which comes in with the same level as this trend line, as well as uh, when it comes up to the 82, it, it will take out this spike high as well. So personally, I would position towards to the long side for the short term uh, on this one, but um, it needs to have a bit more retracement down at uh, 25.42, which is not that far away. So down at this level, in terms of the 40 to 82, there's 40 pips. Okay, 22. 20 pips will be enough on this one. Uh, so if the, if, the, um, if obviously the price comes down to this level, it's probably going to continue to fall. So a that case will be we might be wrong uh, but yeah okay the entries entry is likely the way I just I have in front of me is at 25 42 in terms of the entry 20 pip stop loss and the target I will target 25 82 which is this level as you can see this highs in here uh, we have these spikes as well as this uh, trend line the price is not that far away from the entry, which is around 10 12 pips away. So we can uh, use this one in terms of the entry at this uh, level 20 pips stop loss. Uh, but again, it does not look like a good, um, good setup uh, on this one. So it's, it's obviously your choice if you want to take it or not. So no, 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 no time frame is. So around here, so it's coming to the same level as the one only uh, lows down there as well. Okay, let me write the levels on this. Here's that. Uh, okay. Mm, that's a lot. Uh, strong bearish bias, I see. I think. Uh, thank you, thank you, Chubonica. <laughs> I'm a star. Okay, cool. And M F S and five hundred. Okay. Well, I'm gonna come back to the S and P. It was S and P five hundred. Uh, yes, the S and P five hundred and Nasdaq. I'm gonna analyze that too as well. Yeah, as I said, this is not the ideal setup. But for now, I'll position to the long side for the short term. Uh, let me write the levels again. Oops, I missed that. So, US 500. No, the US 500. US 30. 500. The US 500. Type. Uh, oh, no, so buy. Type is buy. Entry is potentially is a 2542. Stop loss is 20 pips. So, in the, the risk reward perspective, that would be one to two risk reward, which is uh, still good. And the target is at. So yeah, this is good. But as I said, it doesn't look particularly good setup. So. Um, I will not be taking personally this trade. Oops, what is that? Okay, so SP 500, uh, MD Salmon, uh, Xau USD analysis, please. Yeah, I'm gonna have a look at the gold after I have done with the SP 500 and uh, NASDAQ. Okay, let's have a look at the SP. SP. Oops, I think it's a wrong one. Yeah, it's a wrong one. Let me see. Okay, that's the one. Hmm. Five. Okay, let me have a look at this. Yeah, 
have a look at the order wheel nuts. Okay. Right, pretty much we covered on that uh, the, the corner when uh, this downside it we covered pretty much on the corner virus or the happiness pretty much came up. Yeah, it came up and tested this highs. Oh, okay. Let's go to the daily, see what we have on the daily time frame. Okay, the way I see it, it does looking it wants to go down, but I will not rush into uh, to trade this one yet. Because on a daily time frame, it's yeah, looking looking like the downs. It looks like it. It has this uh, the pressure towards the downside, but it's not it's not confirmed yet. So I would wait at least. I would wait for the um, for the price to come for at the very minimum to come down to this level. Actually, maybe even break. I want to see the uh, price coming down here. Yeah, I will not trade this one at the moment. I see the um, tension to downside on a daily time frame the, the price came up and tested that resistance the resistance level on the higher time frames on the market time frame and then it's it's having this um, obviously reaction on that so I would not I will not trade this one yet uh, at least until I see the price has broken this uh, down this level and um, around 29 or the 29 55. 29.55 zone and after that I would um, potentially get to the short side but for now yeah for now it's still looking uh, strong for the upside but I do see the uh, it could have a downfall but we need to be patient on this one because uh, price can price can trick us so we're gonna see yeah I'll wait for this one to uh, before I trade it so potentially, as I said, to break this uh, down this level, or if the price, uh, if you're gonna see some strength, then I do want to see the price coming up, uh, showing strength. That's one of them, or by the candles, and um, potential to come up around this level where the spikes are. And if it closes strongly, then I will be looking for the uh, for the buy side. Obviously, the first target is gonna be around here, and the second one further up and then maybe even leave some of it to run it further but that's like quite a long uh the long view of it for the potential but we need to wait what the price gonna do first if that come down this way or break this uh, higher oops uh so this is on a waiting i'll wait on this one before i decide to trade personally so and the next one was the nasdaq so yeah i can't say any levels on this one Nasdaq. Mm. Yeah, Nasdaq. I don't trade the Nasdaq. Uh, let's go to the higher time frames. Mm. Wow. Well, Push, pushing high. Okay, this one was February down to March. Where was this corona thing? Let me draw this trend line up here. Yeah, we get this nice trend line. Okay. Yeah, this is a bit tricky too. 
looks like it's gonna top out but i don't trust when the uh, when the markets do that the bottom out or the top out because the market can uh, market can be a uh, long uh, very long period of time the more than we can afford so it can easily come up and go make it another new high so i would not trust on that one but it does looking it tries to push tries to push quite high Well, this one has this jump up here. At least still over the weekend. Price opened here and pushed it higher. I would this one. I would uh, same. I would wait for this. What the price will do. Same on the S and P five hundred. If I would, if I would have tried this one, I would wait either. Uh, the confirmation if the price is going to go higher or it's going to start breaking down because it doesn't really give us uh, much of a clue. Obviously, we are on the upside as of the way it's looking um, then down. But when <laughs> when I see something is going up for uh, too long without uh, very minimal pullbacks, uh, then I start getting worried because it's only going to take something like this one as we can see it on there this is where the coronavirus um started to uh, basically spiral so there's probably going to be followed maybe some heavy selling uh, so i don't like when i see when the price is aggressively going up without much of a replacement because it doesn't really happen and uh, it only happens can happen for a long time, but it's only going to take something like a, uh, the COVID-19 to, uh, or something, something else to push the price aggressively down. So what we had, what we've seen in here, so the price was going up for a very long time. This is a weekly time frame, and then in, in like three weeks, it was it gave everything pretty much what was gained in almost like more the year or something, or yeah, just under. So I would personally wait on this one. I would not rush into um, to get on to to get on to um, either buy or sell for now, at least. I'll be looking for them. Yeah, I can't really. Yeah, I can't really. Move. I would have not trade yet at the moment because it's it's quite unclear. And as I said, on the weekly time frames, it looking like it was just been going up quite aggressively. And uh, when it, when that happens, on um, it it just need that trigger. Uh, then before it starts to go to uh, one way pretty aggressively. In this case, it's gonna be towards downside at some point because it's been going up for too uh, too much. Kind of recovered later on the COVID 19, but uh, still. Either for more confirmation that the price wants to go up, uh, but um, I will be a bit skeptical on that one yet, uh, or more confirmation that the price will go down at least. Are we going to see something like, if we're going to see something like this candle, this bearish candle, then I will be looking for the uh, more downside, but for now it's uh, sit and wait on this. Yeah, so that's my view on that one. But again, I don't want to mention that I don't, I don't trade the um, uh, NASDAQ, uh, as well as the US um, US 30 so maybe I'm not the best person on that one to ask the S&P 500 I do trade occasionally and um, yeah occasionally I have to trade the S&P 500 so let's go to the gold see what we got on the gold Good old gold. It did not. It did not. Came down to sixty-two. I have. Yeah, I've been eyeing on the gold for the uh, pretty much since the last week. Okay, it's pushing higher. Yeah, it's pushing, pushing, pushing up. Uh, we've seen. We. I. I missed. Uh, if you follow me, I missed the. Um, I missed the entry because the price. Price at that. Uh, sudden move and <laughs> it just happened that I was not there on in front of the screen the uh, the entry was at 1750 I believe 
uh, and then now I was waiting for another uh, dance, uh, another entry which uh, has not really done it, which was a 17, uh, was a 1760, I believe it was 1762. Yeah, down at this level, but it did not really date. Yeah, I was waiting for the entry for the price to come down on Friday, I believe, but then uh, when I got to the screen, I just find out that we had this uh, spike down and then prices continue to push higher. We're still sitting on this uh, four hourly resistance, so we're gonna wait, uh, still on a waiting list and our eye on the gold. If the price is gonna start breaking higher, uh, the water is breaking higher, or it's gonna retrace to, um, it was going to retrace. Ideally, I'm, I'm hoping for the price to come down to this uh, 1762. That's my uh, this one. Get, that's going to be my entry on uh, that. If the price manages to come down, originally it was down here, but we already missed the opportunity. So next one's going to be at this uh, at this level uh, with uh, I think a 20 pip stop loss. I'm not sure I did write that down. I think I did. I don't know. Uh, so that one was yeah 20 pip stop loss on this one. 20 or 25? 20, 20, 20, 20, pips is enough. Uh, 20 pips uh, stop loss on this one, and we're gonna look for that target, which is uh, the pretty much is a monthly high, which is at 1820. I don't know why I'm in my head because uh, I've been looking at this one for quite some time. Uh, so. But we want for the price to come down. So ideally, I do like to getting onto the pullbacks, which is gonna be one at this case. And if the price, if the price isn't gonna retrace and it's gonna start breaking uh, up to break these highs in the short strength, then uh, what we're gonna do is to pretty much jump into the trade on the on the breakout. So, but then uh, the risk reward is not gonna be as good as on a pullback. But I still gonna be taking that chance. Pulling around 1782 down at 62. So we're gonna see that. I want to. Uh, I want to observe in terms of the um, if the price starts to break this uh, this level in here. Uh, but for now, we have the level on the um, on the pullback, which is 1762. Uh, the entry 20 pips stop loss and 1820 in terms of the targets. Uh, so I did write them one on the. Some time ago, I can't remember when it was yesterday. Yesterday, I believe it was yesterday. Uh, I believe it was yesterday. So it's pretty much the same uh, same view. It has not really changed much. So gold. I'm gonna write it again. Uh, type B buy entry is a pullback, which is 17, 1762, and stop loss 20. Targets is at there's a potentially little retrace on the 1800, but I still gonna hold my target at 1820. There's a good chance the price will uh, go um, go to that uh, targets. Okay, I'm gonna come back to uh, let's see what's going on. So I'm writing down the what I'm doing pretty much. Don't want to join our Discord channel. Yeah, Jay Walter. Hello, hello, Jay Walter. Uh, good morning. Can we take a look at the NZD card? Yeah, I'm gonna have a look at the NZD card. NZD card. Let's go to NZD cards. Jay Walter is asking. NZD cards. Uh, the red looks, oh, yeah, pretty flat. Yeah, NZD CAD is very flat. Just looking at this, uh, this area in here, very choppy, just up and down, up and down. It doesn't really do much on a daily time frame. Let's go to four hourly. Oh, guys, don't forget to smash the like on this video, please. Um, if you're watching this, and especially if you like it, smash the like on this video. It really means a lot. It supports my channel immensely, so I do appreciate it. Please. If you do that, so I do all this free content, so that's the one thing I would ask for me to smash the like on this video. Yeah, NZD Cards is uh, 
pretty much untradeable. It's very choppy, so it's not really doing anything at all. So it doesn't. It's uh, very directionless and not going up, not going down. So I will not. Um, yeah, I want to trade this one. Yeah, we'll leave this one alone for now. It's it doesn't do much. Yeah, as most of the currencies are very uh, very choppy, so it, they're not really moving too much. So it's <laughs> I think it's uh, very uh, annoying for uh, especially for new traders because you can't. It, it's very difficult to find the trades, uh, especially if you are day trading or swing trading because it just not the market is just not giving it to you. Uh, what about depending on what slide you're using, uh, but it's, uh, it's a lack of the uh, a lack of the trades, I would say. So yeah, NZD CAD, I would say it's not untradeable for now, so leave it alone until the price either goes higher or breaks. It needs to break this uh, this level. Which, whichever is it up or down. So until that happens, it's uh, just uh, leave it alone for now. Uh, GBP. Okay, let's now return to my uh, return to British bonds USD. No return. Okay, now GBP USD is starting to move. Okay, on the daily time frame we had. We almost had a, a trade yesterday, but I did not. <clears throat> I was looking British pounds, USD, Euro, USD. I did well on that, but I did not quite retrace at that level. I think it was about 12 pips away for the entry, and it just it just started to uh, collapse down. And uh, we did, uh, or at least I didn't miss out on that trade because it didn't give me that setup. So uh, I know some of you guys probably taken that trade, which is good. Okay, on a day time frame, it does going nicely. Uh, it's probably going to continue to fall. Yesterday we have uh, yesterday we have tested this uh, daily low down at this level, and okay, but then we'll be going down here. At the daily time frame is good. Twenty one, about seventy five. Let's see what we got on a four hour and one hour time frame. Okay, okay, it's picking up, picking up, funny. It has to come down a bit more though. Okay, about well, 47. Okay, I see on this one there could be a potential trade on the British pounds USD. Not yet though, I do want to see the close of the four hour time frame, but for now it does looking good. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen in the next. Uh, well, first of all, this four hour candle has to close, so it's going to be one hour and 20 minutes before this. Uh, four hour candle is closed, then if it closes favorably, then we're gonna have the trade. So, potentially, we're looking for in about one and a half hours or so on. Uh, I won't be here on the live, but I will be updating on the Discord channel. Uh, yeah, Laughing Monkey is saying too much consolidation. Uh, I don't know if you're watching, but okay, I'm gonna return to uh, that one later. Uh, later. So British pounds USD. So we're gonna see how it's gonna go. But this is the potential trade on this. If it's gonna set it up or not. So it's in another support level down at 2240. Yeah. yeah, let's see what I want time frame. I know a lot of uh, traders like to pick the uh, if it's a double top or a double bottom, uh, they do like to pick on that. Uh, but most of the times, the uh, the market, the, the price does not really go that way. Uh, so I know, yeah, like this one is a double bottom. Obviously, this is only a one hour time frame, so it's not as strong if it was on a daily time frame. But uh, personally, it does not work as much uh, because even if the price comes down to the double, whatever the double bottom, it likes to. Um, when there's a lot of trade goes in, a lot of buy trades in this case, it will double bottom. Uh, the price likes to, uh, so in this instance, uh, when the traders put the buy orders, because always making a double uh, double bottom, and if you're using something like a MACD or um, 
material no RSI and it gives you divergence then it just gives that strong I believe that okay the price is gonna go up and then I can use the tight stop but uh, most of the times or uh, eight eight out of uh, ten times what happens the uh, traders jump into this um, whatever the low in uh, low is in and then place the stop it down at least level and the market comes down comes down makes this long spike takes out all the uh, all the stop orders and it just continues to uh, co go up so we need to be um, uh, yeah we need to be aware of it we need to give the market the chance that to show us that okay maybe it has an intention to go up because the market can easily just continue to uh, dip down uh, so uh, in this case, this is on a waiting a waiting lease potential for the next couple of hours. We're gonna see the trade. I will be mentioning on the Discord channel. Uh, for now, it's uh, sit tight and wait. What gonna happen? I was in the Euro. No, the Euro USD. I don't know Euro USD. Uh, Euro USD was yesterday. I thought I'm gonna analyze Euro USD, but uh, that was yesterday. So use the Japanese yen. I'm gonna see at the USD Japanese yen. When I look at it, it was moving, but then it's kind of slow down okay so the potential for the british bonds usd in the next couple of hours depending on how this uh, how it's going to work out so let's jump into the usd japanese yen again i can't really mention the levels because i do not know yet uh, i want to see how it's going to go on the um on the time frame okay usd japanese yen let's go to the daily time frame and see what we have okay i think i can move my Emily sitting on my left hand side, you don't see them guys, but uh, yeah, she looks like she's fighting with a fly. <laughs> okay, funny. Okay, anyway, back to the professional. Uh, let's go, let's see, I can draw this another trend line up here. Okay, so it looks like we have this longer wedge in here. Okay, daily time frame. Rise of the resistance. It tested yesterday, though. It? Yeah, it tested yesterday. So yesterday we tested this resistance where the price is. Look at this cluster of price action in here. Uh, we tested it yesterday, and looks like maybe it wants to push. Uh, maybe it wants to push higher. Let's go to four hour time frame. Okay, four hour time frame. We make this low down here, which is okay. Maybe there's something there. Right. Okay. No, I don't think we can. I was looking for the potential buy. I don't like the way it's looking on a daily time frame in terms of the buy. I was looking like maybe we can go to these lows, these four hourly lows, to uh, for the potential towards upside. It doesn't look good on a daily time frame in terms of the for the buy. And we are sitting on a strong resistance level, so it might stay for quite some time. Uh, so that could be a bit tricky. Let's go to one hour time frame. We also have this the other low down there as well as we got these lows down here but that will be a bit too far down okay this one's gonna be i would say i'm gonna monitor this one and see if 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 uh, if it's gonna be a potential trade on this one i'm pretty skeptical to um yeah i'm pretty skeptical to take this uh, take this trade because again does not sometimes the, the trades come in it does not look particularly good something like this one but uh, some uh, in this case like I can have a very tight stop loss uh, so if it like if it works out 
obviously the chances of that working out is lower on this type of trades but if that works out the uh, rewards gonna be pretty good uh, so that's why I'm, I'm thinking like should I give it a try because if it works out so 108.25 is a potential target on a daily high uh, actually 108.40 on a 4 hour time frame so this one we tested so I'm not gonna solve it 1.25, let me see. So if I was looking at this one to get on here. Fifty seven. I can pretty much give it this one a ten pip stop loss or maybe twelve pip stop loss. Uh, so fifty seven to ten pips of home. 60 with a spread so 60 with a 12 pips yes yeah, so that gives me 65 so that if this one works out then it gives me 65 pip gain with only 12 pip stop loss that's almost one to six risk reward uh, so but with the chances of that working out is slimmer uh, much lower because I'm using such a tight stop loss and um, uh, the way it looks like it's not as um, as good but then you have the game so I'm debating like mm, because setup is not that good so I'm debating like should I give it a try because the one to six is a very good risk reward and uh, yeah it just makes up the six uh, six losses um, oh yeah five Five and a half or five around, so it's still very good in the school wars. Uh, but yeah, setup is not very good. On the four hour time frame, it looks okay. Uh, on daily, not so good. Uh, so I'm just, I would say, I'll leave it for now. Uh, see how it's gonna do in the next couple of hours. If it's gonna have uh, the way it's gonna come down, I'm gonna observe the way it's gonna come down. If it's gonna take the three four candles to come down to this level then I will, I will take the trade uh, but if it's going to come down probably like this one then uh, I will leave it alone so for now let's leave it on the um, watch list uh, does does look uh, it has the potential for the risk reward for the trade it looks good the setup wise it doesn't look that good so I would uh, I will leave this one alone for now in terms of just I'm going to watch it and see if it's going to work out so again the levels is I can't, I'm gonna I'm not gonna mention the levels at the moment uh, because I wanna pause a bit more. But my view is if um, take the trade on the buy side around down to this level with a very tight stop loss, so around uh, 12 pips stop loss. So it's gonna position the stop loss down here. Uh, obviously, that means that the chances of this one workout is not good. But if that works out towards upside. Uh, then a risk reward is very good on that. So let's. Um, so I want to sit and observe on that. Okay, let's gonna come back to uh, back to the chat. Okay, Walter said understood. Thank you, no problem, Walter. Anytime. Okay, so what we have the Emily was writing support us by giving the video a like, guys. Okay, yeah, important. Likes are important. <laughs> okay, so we're kind of, da, 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 da. okay, so we have about yeah, we have about forty five to fifty minutes. No, no, 40, 40 minutes left around on the day. Oh, how about the news? So we have news out on Canadian, as I remembered, uh, in terms of the sort of a key news out. Oh, yeah, uh, we have the key news, then. that's the key news, but it's later in the day. So we have the uh, Canadian GDP on him, uh, so the monthly Canadian GDP, so that's on the Canadian side. Uh, so that can create the volatility, but the key news is uh, today at 5.30. This, this time is all the UK time, so we have the key news on this side. So on the US dollar side, which is the Fed's, uh, Fed's news, uh, Fetcher uh, Powell uh, testifies, so it's about to deliver the speech at 5.30, so that can create the volatility. Uh, because depending what uh, 
what's gonna go, what's gonna be the speech like, then it can create a uh, volatility. So be aware of that one because uh, it can spike depending what, uh, what how they're gonna say. He, uh, he's gonna say on the uh, at 5:30 meeting. So be aware of that one. So if you're in the trade, uh, maybe uh, if it's if you, if it's too uh, too close, or you maybe just get into the trades and you just. Uh, uh, to get you the Japanese yen will be the great example of this one. So if we take the trade just before the uh, just before that 5:30 news is out, uh, and we have like something like a 10 pip stop loss, then that one that would not be good uh, because if uh, if uh, that speech is going to affect the news and it's going to move, uh, it has a sudden move like a 50 pips against your direction, then you're going to suffer the big slippage. So we don't want that. Uh, so we need to be aware of it. Obviously, I will be. Uh, I'm aware of it uh, when I take the trade. So if it's like something like uh, 20 minutes before that news is out, then I'm not gonna take the trade, and I'm gonna wait for the um, wait for that we're gonna get the news out. And if I see this still the potential to uh, take the trade, then I will do it after that. Uh, it just the uh, when uh, the this is like the psychological thing when. Um, when the traders they do not take the trades, so for instance, if you take this uh, on the board, so like, okay, I'm not going to take the trades, and then you don't take the trade, and you, let's say you're thinking to buy the US to Japanese yen, right? And then you don't take the trade and you wait until that news is out, and then suddenly, if the news goes like, uh, in your favor and it just goes up, and it's like, oh, I should have, I should have taken the trade, so they kind of beat themselves up. Uh, but we are here to. We are responsible, are responsible traders. You have to think on the other side as well because, uh, okay, you might have get lucky in this case that you put the trade, use the very tight stop loss, and the um, it happened that the uh, the news went in your favor. But you have to look at the other side as well uh, because that will trump your um, your. Uh, your sort of uh, the profit, so to speak, because it's only going to take one time it goes against you, especially if you're not using stop losses, and then that will kill pretty much a lot of your trades, uh, which you made the profit on. So you have to be, so you need to think of in terms of the uh, as a responsible trader. Okay, uh, it just happened to be lucky that the trade went in my favor, but that happens. So uh, yeah, I'm a lot of traders that beat themselves up like, oh, the price went. In my way, I should have taken the trade, but you just you did not know that. No one, uh, no one, no one knows that. So, um, yeah, there's there's no good uh, coming from uh, beating, beating yourself up because uh, it will affect your next trade, and uh, that's the thing we need to avoid on that. So, I just wanted to mention that it's a psychological thing uh, affects a lot of traders. A lot of traders. I think there's a uh, there's a term in the psychology that's uh, I can't even remember what it's called. Well, there's a psychology. I, I read a lot of uh, books about psychology. I love psychology. My favorites, the mindset in a way. So that's probably one of the reasons why I fell in love with the trading in the first place. Uh, apart from the chart summary or something and all that, but uh, the, the mindset mindset side of the view is uh, very fascinating. Okay, so we got so we got thirty five minutes. So I'm gonna give it a few. I'm gonna give it a few more minutes. So if I don't see any um, anything coming on in the chart, then probably call it a day. I did analyze quite a few um, the currency pairs as well as the uh, yeah US uh, US thirty Nasdaq as well as uh, what was S and P five hundred. And on top of the other currency pairs as well. So if I don't see much going on, then probably, probably a day. Should we have a look at the one more currency? Then call it a day. If nothing is, let's have a look at the EURUSD. Uh, USD. And if nothing going on, then probably, probably a day for today. But I'm going to be on a Discord channel. Okay, 10 time frame. Okay, day time frame looking ugly. In the four hour time frame, oh, the four hour temp, uh, time frame that's the uh, it did not set up. I was looking at the yesterday, I was looking yesterday that the price to 
four, I believe this was this candle if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this four hour candle. I was waiting for this one to close and I was hoping that the price is going to close somewhere on this one, but it did not do it. And um, because entry is supposed to be down at this level at 12.50 if in the, in the case of the if this uh, four hour candle would have closed uh, nicely. So this closed like a quite a long tail, so I did not take this trade, but that was the um, that was the initial trade I would have taken if the price, uh, if this four hour candle would close the, I did announce it on the, uh, on the live chat as well. And so the entry was down here, uh, up here, as well as the stop loss. I can't remember what was the stop loss, but the target was uh, up here at 78, 1278. I remember. Uh, so it just did, uh, yeah, pretty much did, did the only moves really. Uh, so the price came down in here, we can see, and then it's rocketed up and hit the targets. And then we had this reaction towards the downside. So probably a lot of people came off uh, around this area, took the profits off. So that's why we had this uh, reaction to downsides. Uh, yeah, that happens. It did not work out this time, but it will work out next time or one after. Is a plenty of trades going to be coming? Uh, it's going to be coming in. So it's, it's, it's not. It's never the shortage of, shortage of trade. Sometimes we just go into the phase like we are. We are at the moment is not very, um, not very good market conditions to to trade off. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's that's what we have to put up with. So yeah, nothing really I uh, can see. Probably one hour time frame. Yeah, more like on the GBPUSD. I like the GBPUSD more than uh, more than EURUSD. Uh, okay, now it's backed way up. It still has one hour before this candle is closed. So if it's going to close something like this one, then I will not be interested in this one, uh, this trade. Uh, but let's see what it's going to do. We shall see. Okay, so I don't see much of engagements on uh, the. Oops, okay, let's just bit. Yeah, I don't see much of a. Not very busy in terms of the. In terms of uh, the live stream. Yeah, I think. Uh, okay. So, live stream. Okay, so probably gonna call it a day, guys. Uh, yeah, you can join our Discord channel, which link is in also in the chat box as well as in the description. And uh, we do this live forex analysis Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. UK time. On top of that, I do upload weekly forex analysis as well as the tips videos. Oh, by the way, that tips video is gonna be coming out this week. I already finished recording, so I just need to edit and um, upload to you uh, on YouTube. So, this is kind of more like a personal. Uh, slash personal slash uh, self discipline, but it's more like a, a my personal uh, journey to become the self discipline and how I um, how it started from the very beginning and how I built that self discipline over the time. So it's more like uh, the video in terms of more to like get to know me as well. So I'm going to be uploading that video uh, this week. I just need to edit it, uh, but it's going to be coming this week. As well as the obviously live forex analysis, uh, the weekly forex analysis. Um, so yeah, and uh, yeah, this live forex is Monday, Friday, 8 a.m. UK time. And if I'm not here, then I will be on a Discord channel, uh, with normal 24/7. But I do spend a good amount of uh, time on the Discord and analyzing. And I do mention all the the, the trades I take on um, on the Discord channel. That's probably most people where the most people are hanging out. So we got this uh, quite a few people, and uh, yeah, as I said, I noticed the drop on my live stream since I started my uh, <laughs> live Discord channel. Actually, my girlfriend did say that you might see the drop of the on the live stream because it's it's more easy on the Discord because I just write type uh, type the uh, the trade when I take it rather than. Um, Rather than on a live stream, you just say, uh, just watch it, and then maybe like, okay, where that if uh, if I see the trade, then I mention it on the um, on the live stream. However, uh, the one thing I want to mention that if I have the ones I write on the live stream, the trades I take, I don't mention it on the Discord uh, because I already mentioned it in 
here. So I have not mentioned the few trades actually, which one I have already wrote on this one. Especially if it's going to go off pretty soon, then uh, um, yeah, I might not mention it on Discord. But I yeah, I try my best to do just um, the work. If it's if it's happening too quick, then um, let's say if I take the, if we take the trade on a live stream, then I'm not going to mention it on the uh, on the Discord channel. If you're already in the trade, so then it's it's already lost anyway. So. So that's a good thing. And also, um, on the live stream, you would learn the, the analysis, uh, the way I do analysis more in terms of the, uh, well then, on a Discord, because on a Discord, you get that, uh, pretty much the result, but not really, the learning the analysis, like when you're watching, I mean, analyzing in here. So that's, I would say that's the difference on that one. Unless that's what you're looking for, if you want just that, okay, just tell me what to trade, what, what to trade, and then I'm done. Uh, then it's a different thing. But if you want to learn, I think, um, in terms of the analysis, I do mention it here as well. As I do actually the, I do a lot of things on the, on the Discord as well to answer the question as well as um, if I see something which will be beneficial, on, uh, then I do post it on the Discord as well. So, yeah. Uh, please guys don't forget to smash the like on this video if you haven't done it already and yeah if you're new to the channel make sure to hit the subscribe i do upload a regular content on youtube pretty much every day i think i stopped doing it on sundays now because i need that to stop uh, away from the screen a bit uh, because i do spend a lot of time on the screen and uh yeah still doesn't mean that it's not busy but I do need some some sort of a chill laid back time as, uh, because uh, it it helps me to recharge and to be better as well and improve. So all that. Uh, okay, so I think I did mention everything. I did mention the news. So five thirty. Don't forget this is the main news. Uh, the key news are today. So please guys, don't forget if you take the trade on the US side, uh, we have this uh, guy speaking. Oh girl, no, it's a guy. Uh, so the uh, Fed, so that can create uh, quite a bit of volatility, so be aware of that one. Uh, so make sure you don't take the trade at the same time that Fed news is uh, out. Okay guys, so we're going to call it a day. Thanks, big thank you to... Okay, what to say, thank you very much for the help. No problem at all, Walter. So I hope you're going to see you tomorrow, and I hope you guys to see you tomorrow on the live race. If not, then I'm going to see you guys on the Discord channel. So, big thank you to my lovely girlfriend, uh, slash assistant on the left-hand side. She's there. <laughs> She's waiting. <laughs> Thank you guys. Have a great day and I will see you guys either on a live stream or on a Discord channel. Bye bye for now.